you know, what, what is what is the best way to create a roadmap? If you're if you're on in the cloud already, if you're developing your cloud infrastructure, what what are, what are some key things you need to be thinking about as you build your cloud roadmap? Uh, Bernard, what's your what's your take on that? Building a roadmap for the cloud. Well, um, you know, uh, I always recommend that people begin with the end in mind, which is what kinds of applications, what kinds of uses are you going to make of of cloud environment? What kinds of things do you want to accomplish with it? And that sort of should inform uh, where you should go with making your decisions about where to place uh, application deployments. Uh, for a lot of companies, they start off and they say, I want to do cloud computing. I'll start by building a cloud, which may not if that makes sense, but the thing that that does is that imposes a great deal of time and planning and capital investment before you can actually start using cloud environments. We sort of recommend that the right place to do it is to start quickly, experiment, iterate quickly, and so really look at probably a public cloud environment and then really find out whether the benefits of cloud computing are accessible for the kinds of applications you want to put up there. So shorten the time to actually getting your hands dirty. Does that mean just simply give Amazon Web Services your credit card and, and, and leave it at things <laughs> as simple as that? Well, that's a pretty common approach. I mean, a lot of organizations start with an Amazon or someone that makes it very easily very easy to start beginning accessing cloud computing services. And, you know, the reason is because they can get there going quickly. And so, um, uh, so you know, that's a, what you just outlined is probably the most common path for most organizations to start doing their cloud computing mm -hmm. is, you know, it's a, it's a developer who says, I got a credit card. I want to get started. Um, I'll just share an anecdote. I can't tell you the company, but one of the companies that uh, we work with, you know, we said, uh, what's going on? And they, they said, we want to start doing, we want to, we're using Amazon a lot, we're leveraging it a lot, because it takes us six weeks to get a virtual machine out of our IT organization. Mm -hmm. So that's why, they, that's why they've chosen to go that route. Michael, are you, the advice you give to people, and I'm assuming you've probably written, you know, voluminous white papers on this. It, 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 it yeah. Boiled down, but if, if you can put it in a nutshell, what, what do you tell people you know, building a cloud roadmap? So, you know, I think it's important to, um, you know, as Bernard said, is think about the outcome. You know, what's the end point? Um, and, and clearly, you know, there, there are individuals that uh, are pulling their corporate card, not their credit card, their corporate card out of their pocket and um, signing up for public cloud services to do dev for just for that reason that it takes so long to deploy a server. Um, I, we're working with clients across the globe, and to give you just a, a good example, um, there's a uh, large telecom here in the UK that uh, you know basically um, paid a billion dollars for some content and wanted to establish themselves in a uh, a new business, uh, an exciting sports venture, and so they um, basically uh, earlier this year said we have 150 days. Wow. to launch an, an entirely new business uh, based on that investment, that acquisition of content. So, you know, to the example of how long does it take to launch a virtual server within a private cloud environment? Well, a lot of us know it, it can take 150 days just to do that. Uh, we launched an entire business. Um, not only that, but we were able to test it and scale it uh, for millions of users uh, and got it out the door uh, by April 1, which was the launch of um, basically the season start. And so that whole kind of creation of an entirely new business, you can only do it leveraging um, the cloud. And so we have one environment for uh, authentication and um, um, ID on one cloud environment. We've got uh, pre-recorded content on another cloud environment, and we're pulling from the content that's on, uh, you know, that's being live streamed from their own production um, uh, center. And so that's a hybrid cloud arrangement where you blueprint the whole solution, you turn it on prior to an event, and then you turn it off. And so it meets the, 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 the financial aspects of, of being cost effective. It met the business obje uh, objectives of, as far as getting it out um, in time for a season start. And so that, to me, use the, use the business, what the business expects, as the key driver for, for defining a roadmap to cloud. Can you, do, you, do you prefer to say you know, what, what sub-vendors you're using? Who's actually providing the, the, 
the actual physical infrastructure for those, or is that a different? different uh, I, so I'm gonna I'll give you the short answer, right? I mean, you know, when you work for uh, you know a firm like Accenture, you've got a lot of capability. Um, so uh, so one part of that question is, you know, we're combining our cloud capability, our, our mobility capability, and our Accenture digital service all together to to create that solution. Uh -huh. From the cloud platform perspective, just to give you the short answer, we're using a variety of um, open source capabilities uh, from a, about you know a dozen or so different companies to stand up a cloud platform that can that can handle this. And we provisioned in that case it was the um, Dimension Data or Opsol Cloud, as well as uh, Microsoft Azure. Wow. as the two public clouds that we pull together into this solution. Interesting. Sean, what do you tell people when they say, you know, building a cloud roadmap, what are some mistakes to avoid? What, what, what must people keep in mind building a cloud roadmap? Well, I think Bernard and Michael kind of hit two of them. I built a company around it, and I think um, around cloud computing, and, and I think the mistakes that typically are made is trying to, to look at it from a vendor-specific view, Mm. Or a strategy specific view. Um, you know, so many people get caught up in these discussions to nowhere on private, public, and hybrid, uh, in very much in the way that we do mobile these days around HTML5 and native. That we're getting caught up in conversations without understanding the business objectives and what the what the workload really is requiring. And for us, we had a very specific workload. It was how do you test a web application? How do you simulate traffic coming from North America and Europe as well as Asia? And we knew we needed servers to be distributed all around the world to be able to simulate that traffic. Uh, we needed a scalable architecture that allowed us to have access to hundreds if not thousands of servers at any given time. And so the public cloud made a lot of sense. But when we built this company, Sosta, there was only one data set, cloud data center in the world. We started a little early. What were uh, the data uh, at cloud uh, at, at Structure 08 two, in 2008, and there was AWS's uh, EC2 East was the only place that was really open. Right. Now we're dealing with 17 different cloud providers, APIs, and, and apps are all around. But I think people kind of get caught up. I think Bernard hit it the right way. Get out there, try a few things, uh, get started, but really look at the app, and as Michael said, look at the business problem you're trying to solve without getting caught up in private public and all these other issues. And then the other thing that, that uh, you need to understand is not all APIs, cloud APIs, are created equal. Uh, there are different value propositions to each API, uh, meaning there's different costs associated, there's different availability associated with it. Um, and, you know, people have got to take those into consideration, you know, whether it's Amazon or HP or IBM or Rackspace or in a number of different players. They all provide different capacities, different costs, different bandwidths, and it all depends. It comes back to your application again. It all depends on the app. Rob, uh, building a roadmap, I think, you know, one of the things that's confusing here is there are no standards, and I think one of the interesting things about what your company has done is it's actually built a unit of cloud computing. Yes. Yeah. almost counterintuitive. So either you, what, what advice do you give people, or how does that, that supposedly standardized unit tie mm -hmm. So, I mean, from, from, from our perspective, you know, I, I think we're looking at this a little differently than, than, um, than everybody else. We, the, the technical aspects are absolutely critical. You have to have the right kind of speeds, the right kind of performance, the right kind of platform, the right kind of API. That That's um, almost the technical table stakes, right? You know, obviously, if the technical solution doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, what we focus on, then, is the economic aspect of that. You know, I firmly believe that going forward, a lot of firms are going to be using multiple cloud providers in multiple regions for multiple different technical um, technical solutions. So from a, from a business perspective, how do you handle the economics of that? How do you try to figure out where to go, when do you go there, why do you go there, and how do you optimize that spend over time, right? The one thing about um, provisioning internally is when you run out of resources, you run out. Um, when you start to get into the public cloud environment, scale comes easy, um, and so do the bills. So how do you start to keep track of the quality of your spend? Um, so that's, that's kind of where, where we took um, and, and, you know, kind of what we did is to try and figure out, you know, why are you going to the cloud? Um, you know, are you going to the cloud to save money? Well, how are you going to measure that? 
right? How much savings do you have to have to uh, overcome switching costs? Are you going to be moving amongst different cloud providers, right? Do you need configuration flexibility versus cost certainty? Um, and those become really important, uh, really important considerations. If you're going to be, you know, moving to a cloud environment, a very static workload, you may be willing to give up configuration flexibility for price certainty, right? I'm running workloads that are going to be constant for a long period of time. So how do you how do you deal with that economically, right? How do you deal with the variability? Um, and I think a lot of the models today are very diverse. Every cloud provider is different. It becomes exceedingly difficult to cost compare, to analyze that, and to hedge that risk. Um, so, you know, we look at that as to say, keep an eye on those commercial goals. Um, you know, what are your financial goals in moving to the cloud? And then make sure that you design a system to track that, because it can very quickly get out of control.